Labdien! Uh, hello to everybody! Let's start! Uh, my name is Carlos Krastiņš, I'm managing partner for Densho in Riga office. I'm glad to be here, it's not my first time and sure not last one. I'm always happy to see young um, men and women here in this room and uh, being ready for new challenges. And uh, today we have these nice people here that we will, uh, together with them, uh, have a, a discussion regarding company evaluation. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, ladies, that you are here. Uh, thank you to my colleagues, uh, Alexander Sundeli, you know, who helped and other colleagues uh, to organize this event. Uh, thank you for SSC that we have good cooperation with this school for a long time. Uh, a lot of employees in Prudentia are coming from your school and sure will come more. And uh, you know, 16 years uh, we are uh, doing uh, company evaluation in Latvia, uh, organizing top 101. Three years we are doing the same in uh, Estonia. Last year we did uh, top uh, 30, the most valuable companies in the Baltics. This year with our partner uh, our company Confidentus in uh, Lithuania, we will do top 101 in Lithuania. And by all of this, of course, we can see a lot of interesting data, a lot of analysis. Uh, we see what are the national or regional champions of our region. And uh, we can see uh, different industries, what are the differences, what are the common things in uh, three countries. Uh, we can analyze uh, industries, analyze companies. And of course, uh, we do see a lot of new companies coming in and, you know, Nowadays, uh, unicorns are very popular uh, here in the Baltics, and especially our colleagues from Estonia are probably national champions in unicorns per capita. <laughs> like every week we do have uh, in Estonia some new unicorn. Yeah, Let's uh, continue like this. And of course, in Latvia, we last year had as well uh, Printful, uh, our unicorn Latvian company in the top 101. Uh, actually, only Latvian operations because uh, global operations are on different entity. This is not counted, but it's interesting aspect to analyze. And uh, yeah, that's I think uh, really good. Our top, as I said, when uh, half of the companies in top will be listed on Nasdaq or on other stock exchanges, then we will stop to do top because then the mission may be accomplished. But it's uh, hopefully it will happen. <laughs> And companies will will go and uh, we will have like listed companies, uh, transparent, good, uh, uh, good part of our economy and society. So that's actually there is a mission that we want uh, to help uh, the businesses and people, uh, students, society with our top to get better understanding how the companies are evaluated, why uh, companies are going bust, why unicorns are coming and going. So all those issues you can better understand. Uh, looking to our top and having this discussion and top is not only for top to be but to have this discussion to have this kind of challenges and uh, to 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 have these people smart people here to to have some talk with you and please ask please ask question be part of discussion uh, so you know uh, uh, we are uh, here as well to see you in Prudentia so we are especially in Latvia and Estonia looking for uh, new people uh, have a practice and uh, internship in, in, in our company, so you're welcome. Uh, so, by the way, our colleagues in Estonia, they did last year a very good job by uh, first time in Estonia, uh, they did uh, prepared uh, tech top of uh, most valuable uh, 25 companies uh, in Estonia with Estonian links on the routes, uh, as well, uh, not only registered in Estonia but uh, in other countries but having Estonian shareholders or or, or, or employees so that's uh, got a lot of attention and interesting discussion and for sure I guess uh, with time we will have this kind of top for all Baltic countries so that's that's a very interesting angle to to be discussed and analyzed so floor is yours and I am happy to be here thank you So, um, 
let's start our uh, our dis this discussion uh, and not to waste time everyone when, when he starts uh, to, to kind of like discussing the first qu uh, first question uh, just uh, tell, tell who you are and, and uh, present present your uh, yourself shortly and, and we go ahead and as, as we talked I uh, will try to talk by, by stages and uh, uh, the uh, through uh, in investment process, and let's let's uh, start with the, with the looking at, at the uh, what 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 is the is all right with my, my microphone, I guess, and and uh, what what underlying prerequisites do you think are the most important for startup growth uh, in into unicorns? And uh, hundreds of startups are made every year. Some companies, like Printful in Latvia, prevail and reach their goals, but others perish. How much of that is luck, and how can we improve that? In in our side, then uh, uh, follow on. Thank you. Uh, I'm Inders Ashchuks. I represent Nasdaq. I'm the C CEO of Nasdaq CSD. Uh, we operate in. In four, in four markets, the three Baltic markets and Iceland, actually. But Nasdaq is, of course, uh, a global company, and we have that privilege together with Prudentia uh, arrange uh, for this. When it comes to startups, uh, I'd say that for the, the first initial uh, seed phase, you know, support is there. The acceleration funds, uh, they do work. Um, I think in, in Latvia we often have that support a bit too fragmented, then maybe uh, that would be uh, preferred. Um, we have this tradition of, uh, how to say, like feudalism, that each ministry is responsible just for their part and, and that's it. So I guess some more lateral matrix cooperation between economics ministry, um, the, the LIA, the investment agency, would be uh, preferred, but but support is there. Where I believe we can do better job in in Latvia is in terms of openness for talent. We we have we come from background of of fears uh, fears of uh, Latvian percentage in in population fears that some foreigners would take uh, our jobs for good reasons, but probably it's it's time to open up. Um, there are still some old school requirements for attracting foreign talent like highest degree in education. Why to have it? I mean, startups know what they, they need, what they want. If they're ready to pay decent salaries like, like 5,000 a month or, or whatever, that's probably good enough. And, and we talk now about the, the Ukraine situation and in some way th there could be um, opportunity to attract some of the wo workforce from there. Um, but, but again, I, I'm not sure we, we're doing uh, what, what we could uh, to, to be really successful. I think if, if somebody ends up now in, in Latvia, it's more like coincidence or by accident or, or maybe they have some family uh, relations. Uh, we probably can do a better job there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the there's pointed out that the uh, bu uh, bureaucracy and fragmentation maybe in our support so somehow. Uh, so may may maybe one of our Estonian friends, Prudentia, uh, Estonian par partner in Indra can, can take from, from here and say, uh, how, uh, how does it look in Estonia, which obviously seems to have less of bureaucracy and fragmentation, uh, judging by the results so far at least. Yes, uh, my name is Indra Kuldek, I'm from uh, Tallinn, I'm a Prudentia Tallinn partner. Uh, yes, of course, the, uh, there is no, I don't see, uh, no, our, our company is mostly involved in, uh, in uh, I think, hello, good, much better. No, it's working. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, it's, um, <coughs> Uh, in Estonia, there is uh, maybe no such kind of problems to uh, to organize, and no, uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, support by uh, by environment. Uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, companies who are sold, and uh, and the founders are giving back to uh, to, to society uh, their knowledge, not only the money, but the knowledge. 
and uh, and we see the growth of uh, uh, startups a lot there is approximately 6000 uh, uh, startups now in in Estonia uh, but it's it's not maybe uh, um, the main topic of uh, of startups that it that must be uh, a big amount of the uh, of the startups if uh, i recently not 3 years ago visited a um, Israel and uh, and if I if I read the news, then uh, they they see uh, degrees of the uh, um, the number of startups. So it's it's more not to do in in uh, volume, but to uh, to to scale up the existing companies. So uh, I think we we grow grow up from these problems. What what you have today in Latvia, but and uh, and moving to uh, another level to uh, to find a way how to scale up the uh, uh, these uh, young stage uh, companies yes i think we are, we are in the, in the middle of uh, of summer i i think so, so yes mm -hmm. okay so we have among us uh, venture capitalist uh, and which uh, who will finally tell but but, but uh, what, what i heard is is that effectively we have this story that uh, somehow were watching the Finnish TV and were learned how to do business uh, by watching all these uh, Danish and, 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 and other uh, ship, shipping uh, 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 series and so on. And, and, and then they started up selling, understanding that there is no money here. So you don't fight for the dividing, but you fight for creating new companies and selling them to Scandinavians and then to everyone else. And then you, when you got the money, you, you kind of help the up and coming people. So how the uh, the Latvian uh, venture capitalists look at this, at uh, this early stage problems and so to say. Yeah, so uh, just introducing myself, I'm a managing partner of Change Ventures, which is uh, the largest pan-Baltic seed fund. So we operate across all three Baltic states, investing at pre-seed and seed stages um, in companies. And uh, one of our best performing com companies in our second fund is two SSE graduates. So to inspire you, I'll come, come, come back to that in a second. But I think the, um, the, the, the question about Skype is very relevant. So uh, the short version of why Estonia is doing so fast, with all due respect to the Estonians, is an accident. So um, uh, Nikola Zenström from, uh, from Skype, uh, the Swede, who was, he, he was working with Estonian programmers, um, uh, and they started Kazan. From there, they started Skype, and that Skype success happened early enough that the snowball from reinvestment, uh, talent, uh, starting new startups, so Wise, Pipedrive, uh, Bolt, all of these have ex skypers So that snowball has just been rolling longer, right? So in Latvia, we don't have to worry. The snowball is rolling here. It's just you just have to be patient because companies that are worth a billion dollars don't get built overnight. Um, it typically takes at least 10 years. Uh, if not longer, right? So, so there's n but there's nothing fundamentally different about Latvia, in my view, than Estonia or Lithuania in terms of the capability of doing that. And Israel is a great example. So I present our region as the next Israel. And in fact, on the metrics, we're looking actually performing very well versus Israel even. And the potential is, is even better in my view. Um, but I think the most important thing is to understand that um, Building a company worth a billion dollars is a very different, um, or more, right? So Bolt is worth, what, eight billion now. So that is a very different proposition than uh, building a local business. So you have to be thinking about building a global business from day one, and that's fundamentally different um, from other businesses. So the two SSE grads I mentioned are um, the co-founders of Planet 42, which is a company we invested, uh, we invested in at seed stage. So. Their first market was South Africa. They do emerging market car subscription service. The next market they've entered is Mexico. They have zero operations in the Baltics, a handful of accountants, basically. But, um, but they're tackling big markets where they can grow a company fast. And you know, we were having a short conversation about valuations here, the difference between a company that has a valuation far in excess of its current profitability or losses is related to how fast it can grow. Right? So, and you can only grow fast if your main markets are very, very large and have much growth potential. Hence, the Baltic states are simply too small as home markets in which to build a billion dollar value company. Now, 
so we do invest in companies that have businesses here, but effectively we look at that as a pilot project, right? So, you know, you, you, uh, Membi is a Lith Lithuanian edtech startup. They started in Lith Lithuania where it's called Digiklasse. You know, for us, that's an experiment. Um, it's great, generate some money, figure out how to do things, but you know, unless they can scale across, in their case, across Europe, um, it's not, it doesn't have the potential to generate a company that's, about, that's worth a billion dollars. And I think the, the thing that you see in Estonia is that there is now so many people who have experience working in companies that can build uh, products that are used by millions and millions of consumers or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of businesses, those people, that experience is what carries over into generating new companies and the capital they earn from successful exits um, or shares they've sold is then reinvested and so that capital and knowledge together makes the snowball roll even faster downhill. And that's kind of the secret of everything. So, so in Latvia we have some great companies which have, you know, we already have Printful, Printify will also be a unicorn, we've backed the Printify investment. Um, but there, there will be more, but it takes time to build a company that's, that's that big. And, and what we do need to do in the early stage, we need more entrepreneurs, we need more of you to decide that you're going to go down the admittedly very difficult path of building a company that's very big and growing very fast. But you know, there's obviously a lot of uh, rewards out there if you, if you can make it happen. So the more of those people we have, the faster we'll get more unicorns. Yeah. So, sounds to uh, use, use the uh, lock, lock in, in, in that that sense, but nevertheless, uh, I mean, I have here one, one venture capital ca uh, cap as well, uh, cap as well, uh, representing the Zig, uh, Zega E uh, in, uh, investments, and I have to say we st we're still in investing in our uh, fourth fund, and uh, somehow it, it has been more difficult to to, to get uh, a Latvian product uh, projects to finance. Okay, we're not very early stage. We are uh, looking for expansion cap uh, capital investments, but uh, uh, Estonian and, and uh, Lithuanian uh, companies have been more at our door, and, and, and uh, uh, I have to say, better, somewhat better prepared, and with uh, more, more uh, from our, our perspective, more viable business plans. And uh, so, uh, even being the patriot, of course, of, of Latin, in any sense, uh, it still yields the question open why we don't see more people there. So, okay, uh, fi finally, we we. Uh, we, we Getting to the uh, to the brave la lady among us, yeah. Hi, uh, I am Beate, uh, general manager of Omniva in Latvia, and uh, actually I would like to call Omniva Estonian government startup, <laughs> if, uh, if I can say so, because maybe uh, a lot of people are not not aware that uh, actually our mother company is Estonian Post, and uh, ten years ago they made a brave decision to invest also in Latvia and establish uh, a great solution for the customers uh, to receive parcels in the parcel machines. Uh, and the interesting thing is that the first manager who actually took off this business is a graduate of SSC and he's Estonian as well. <laughs> uh, so he was managing this company for, for five years and um, the interesting thing happened that we were not the first ones in the market offering this solution. There was actually a Latvian startup uh, before us uh, called uh, Pasta Stacija. Uh, and they were the biggest at that moment. Uh, they were already for a few years in the market, but uh, but actually they are not here anymore. Uh, and uh, they eventually, a few years ago, they were brought by, by Latvian Post. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to say with this, it's actually, if I compare maybe the mentality and, and the way how different companies are doing the business, uh, I think, uh, what is a trend that I have noticed myself uh, that uh, Latvian startups maybe they tend to, tend to uh, wait for quick gains and then maybe take out the dividends at the first opportunity uh, rather than investing into development. But uh, also from Estonian perspective and from maybe other countries' perspective, the companies are more focused on uh, long-term growth rather than immediate gains. And maybe that has also been a success factor for Omniva although it actually took five years until we became profitable doing this business. Okay, very interesting. So, um, so it means that uh, somehow uh, either, either the local companies are more greedy or 
or they haven't learned one of the basic principles, what, what I learned uh, early, in the early in the business, what, what's wrong, uh, that uh, 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 big success in small country like, like, uh, like, like the Baltics means uh, small money, and a small success in big market means big money. So, but then you have to kind of like be, uh, t take your time to get to this big market. So the next one is, is, uh, is a turnaround uh, specialist, I would say, uh, that uh, ha is, is doing venture capital within his uh, growing and, and successful company, which has been uh, t turned around from a rather unsuccessful story before that. So uh, uh, Andris Kuh as well uh, recently has been elected uh, the head of La Latvian um, um, uh, employers association and and represents some somehow I mean the the entire our uh, uh, big big uh, co uh, company uh, ecosystem so to say okay go ahead yeah my name is Anders I'm coming uh, from very uh, simple or or um, conventional business uh, fish canning uh, my company is Caravel and and I'm uh, co-owner and CEO of the company and we are growing quite fast, uh, not comparably with maybe some uh, startup uh, cases, but as a conventional business quite uh, well and, and doing business in all over the world in 46 countries. Uh, I don't know not much about uh, startups. The only my connection with them are when 100% uh, cases when someone uh, came to us to ask for some investments in startups, we said no. Uh, and uh, that's the only the only case how I'm connected with that. Uh, mostly, what I would uh, uh, when when uh, case about what we are discussing today, I would like to say that that my evaluation on on the uh, entrepreneurship and also the startups uh, as a part of that is that uh, we have less than enough uh, entrepreneurs at all in Latvia, and and that's the. Uh, and uh, as a second part, also the startups. So, uh, uh, if they are not enough in quantity, they cannot be also uh, so much successful of them. Uh, and uh, from my uh, perspective, the biggest problem is the environment and the business environment, and how trendy or, or you can say sexy or somehow is is the uh, business. Uh, and uh, it comes uh, to the questions of uh, how the uh, government or institutions are looking on that, how the financial institutions are looking at that. And I think that uh, here we have a lot of lot to do in, in, the, in Latvia to improve this climate. Uh, that uh, entrepreneurship is something that must be become trendy. It, uh, they, the people who are doing that or young people must be uh, more interested to start that. And it's not only about the climate around, it's also about the education. Uh, for example, uh, I'm the entrepreneur only because m I think that, that uh, one of big parts is that I was not so clever to pass the exams to study here in SSA, uh, and, and that's why I need to do something else uh, to find out what to do, and, and I became, uh, became a businessman. So uh, uh, I think that uh, this is one of the, of the Global case is what we need to to solve uh, in the first time as as a, as a country that uh, this climate must become more and more attractive uh, than it is now. So it's not trendy enough to be uh, to make money in Latvia. It turns out. Okay. All right, um, Davis representing Printful, um, and I guess what I have to say is pretty much to summarize all of these people say what they said. Right. I guess one thing we're missing. Um, or we have quite a bit in Latvia is fear, right, and lack of these inspiring stories. Um, and basically, what we see with Draugian Group and right, what Draugian Group has done with Printful and what Printful now is doing with Printful bits and, and starting new companies, where we are experimenting constantly, right? We have with Draugian Group, we started 100 companies, and I think 90% of them failed, right? And, and we have some successful companies, right? But I don't think we have that much of um, sort of people. Uh, starting this uh, this business, maybe they lack a sort of inspiring story as in they have in Estonia, right? Skype and and what's to come after the Skype, uh, and we hope that Printful can be the inspiring story for new people sitting here, right? Uh, to actually try and experiment and start uh, their own uh, business. Uh, that's the first part. The second part I would like to say, I guess, also from the Printful experience is 
uh, to focus on these big markets, right? I think here in in Baltics we have quite have quite good uh, talent pool, uh, but the markets are rather small, right? So, uh, as as colleague said, right, um, winning in small market probably will not make you very very much money versus uh, being very good or being good at large market might help you, right? So I think what we should do is think bigger, right? Focus on those larger markets and and looking at the markets that can scale and grow. So I think that's um, sort of my and Printful perspective. Okay, so uh, here here's uh, the the the, ne the next uh, member of the plan who, who I think never had the problem with thinking too small and 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 has has been running ventures around all around the Balt Baltics and not, not only but in some places I I, I, I deem too risky. Uh, so Henrik, your your take. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Henrik. Uh, I graduated from SSC Riga in 1997, so like a million years ago. Um, I actually wanted to say that I don't think we should make it into a contest about Estonia or Latvia or, or anything uh, like that. Um, uh, I myself, uh, I have been an entrepreneur actually, and I can claim that I have been part of the uh, LHV co-founding group, uh, so which became a unicorn, though uh, a local uh, billion dollar company. And I wanted to say actually that the, if we think about the financial services, then obviously actually the early banking, uh, you know, Hansa Bank was a uh, multi-billion uh, dollar business uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, you should not always think that you need to basically have a great business idea that you will be able to take outside. You can also start locally and like uh, find your, uh, your story, find what you're passionate about and, and uh, work with that. And I think like maybe uh, to to um, uh, take away also like thinking about like Latvian uh, very successful like Inbo uh, or the the uh, Draugem group, then I think it could have been a little bit different story in Latvia if Ruby Light would have been uh, let's say in its social media investments would have been more transparent and inspiring you know in the in the uh, mid two thousands when they were actually very successful and invested in uh, very large. Uh, uh, Russian uh, social media groups, so uh, they could have been actually the sort of the same success story that Skype was for Estonia, but uh, but just for whatever reasons, they did not make it into a kind of a local champion. Um, but um, uh, maybe from an entrepreneur's perspective, because I've been actually raising capital for different uh, different companies, I think one of the most important things is uh, that you do what you like and you have staying power. So. Really, I think uh, um, we, we uh, Andres mentioned here that it takes a long time to, to uh, build a successful company. And uh, the only way you can actually uh, overcome all those sort of uh, obstacles and difficulties that you will definitely have is by doing what you like and, and actually thinking outside the box and pivoting and, and doing all those things. Okay, but but, but uh, I think uh, just to s stay with 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 the uh, early stage s a little bit, I, I think we should we should uh, okay, we have a diagnosis, but but uh, what we could do more actually. So I is it an education back to the school? Uh, again, the thing the the Estonians uh, did a, a, a while ago, changing the education system, paying more. Having uh, larger schools paying more to the teachers and so on, and, and then somehow I don't know, a, a more more uh, influential or uh, the entrepreneurs or w what is it? Or are we still waiting un until the I mean someone will strike big, get these billions of dollars in the account, and start driving around in fancy cars and and o otherwise impressing uh, young people who don't know what to do with their lives? But uh, uh, so. I, I still, I would like to get what, what we could do more to encourage more start startup uh, companies and entrepreneurs in Lat Latvia. Uh, is there anything we could we could do more? And then again, uh, we will get to the next. Uh, can we do uh, after that more uh, for these er very early stage companies to kind of like survive? Can we nurture the good ideas so it's unrealistic? Okay, uh, we'll go, go ahead. We'll, we'll stop. I'm happy to take this. Um, so first, none of the entrepreneurs we back drive fancy cars until they exit with lots and lots of money. Um, they're busy spending all their time working. Um, and uh, I think there are there are things we can do. So um, so I think education is one. So uh, the foundation I'm part of, Tech Abriga, does 
uh, startup school, we call it. Um, so it's basically people who are, uh, want to be founders, uh, learning about you know what it means to raise money, what what does a pivot mean, what's product market fit, what you know what's how do you think about growing businesses, digital marketing, all of basic stuff. Um, and so I think there is still training and education you can do um, uh, that will help people um, succeed um, because uh, you guys are all privileged to have an education that SSE off offers you. Uh, there are many entrepreneurs out there who have less education and who still need help in figuring out. I mean, I have many conversations with my companies about some basic accounting concepts, which I'm sure will be very clear to you guys. But some of them are really important. Revenue recognition, for example, right? So, but some of these basic things are, are, are useful and can be trained. And um, so that's one. I think second, um, part of the reason I push the message about going outside the region, I don't know you can build a big company in the region, base, but I'm, I want to, uh, push the ambition of the founders um, in Latvia and the Baltics to think bigger, because we still come across um, founders who, who are very talented, but are you know not seeing bigger opportunities in front of them because they're worried about you know whether they could tackle them. And the answer is, until you actually try, you don't know. And people can do amazing things once they try. And so I think that ambition level still is needs to be pushed, uh, especially in Latvia. And that's one of the advantages Estonia has is you have so many examples around you of people who have done things they themselves you know, thought were impossible. Hiring that top salesperson from a Silicon Valley company, you know, until you actually try and you succeed and someone next to you does that, you're not sure it's actually possible. It is possible, right? It's just very hard. <laughs> and so this ambition and, and so forth and g having those examples is something that's, you know, it's part of the reason the snowball takes time. But so the more of those we can generate, the more stories we can share, uh, the faster this will happen. There are some things governments can do as well. Uh, question I keep getting asked, they're limited, I would say, because governments don't build businesses. Governments regulate um, and you know serve the consumers uh, to protect them. So, um, But there is a startup tax law in Latvia, which is gradually getting better and better at supporting uh, stock option laws in the Baltic states are the best three on the planet, bar none. Better than US, better than UK, better than Israel are none. Latvia is, by the way, is the best. Um, so there are things governments can do, you know, to help startups succeed. But uh, really, the main thing is having founders and supporting founders, you know, having more investors. So we'd love to have more angel investors in Latvia. Um, Estonia has an unbelievably strong angel ecosystem. Um, and, and also, the final word on this is, you have to also remember where we are relative to others. So about three weeks ago, I saw some fantastic news. Italy has its first unicorn. And we're all like, really? Like, are you serious? Like the first one, Italy? Yes, the first one. So the Baltic states, you guys are already way ahead of places like Italy um, in terms of being a place where you can build very, very big successful businesses. So uh, there's just more opportunity to come. Okay, so so uh, as we have this that diversity, not not necessarily to, uh, as, as it was mentioned to to uh, have studied in SSC. SSC. So uh, maybe An Andres can can as well uh, come with some ideas what we could do uh, as as a system as a country to get more uh, uh, people up up and uh, starting startups and 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 businesses. What's your take? No, if you're looking on the long run, from my opinion, that first is education. You need to from the early. Uh, years to to uh, train to children and to, to school uh, children and to students that that uh, business is something that that uh, it's not the uh, easy way but it's something very interesting and very uh, very uh, uh, long run uh, uh, things to do and that that's one point education second is uh, I think that uh, as a society here, uh, we need to get rid of uh, fear to fail. That's very common in the in the uh, environmental uh, in business environment, and uh, and that's not only about uh, feeling inside that that uh, entrepreneurs are fe feeling afraid to fail, but it's also 
what uh, about the things and how uh, uh, other society like banks, like government, like uh, neighbors and, and everyone around are, are treating them after they fail once. Uh, and, and that's normal. And uh, actually, when you by yourself, first time try that and failed, then after that you feel it's okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, at the first time you are feeling very afraid and, and I think this, this is attitude, it's uh, one of the main cases why many uh, are trying not to go into entrepreneurship or are doing it very slowly, very uh, careful way, so with no uh, big ambitions, no taking up the risks and so on. So, so it's a cu cultural thing in a way. Yeah. yeah, we are coming from the agriculture uh, basement, so everyone is very, uh, very stable and trying not to not to risk much. Yeah, but I think the Estonians did the same. I mean, to a large extent, I don't see that there is much uh, much difference. I think genetically, we're the same as we know, and um, something else is, is is at play. It's a cultural thing, uh, and and. Uh, Okay, you can teach uh, entrepreneurship. I, I, I've read about that, but uh, I, I think it uh, still uh, it's basically some percentage of the population who has the right uh, complex of genes, which is pretty much uh, ability to take the decisions in uh, in uh, with a lack, lacking information. People who are doers who want 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 to do and who are ready to take unduly risks, un uh, not calculated enough. If someone calculates, has all the information, calculates all the risks and everything else, he's too late to the game or doesn't start. So you have to be stupid to some extent, uh, but very active in this process. And, and not, not, be, not being overwhelmed by the, by the mistakes and, and drawbacks and just keep doing, keep doing. And, and, and uh, that's ultim ultimately some kind of like gene complex, which is roughly 8-9% of the population in all the countries. And, and the question is uh, where we lose them. If the Estonians have this, where we lose them, how, how, why don't they get up and and uh, and so on? But, but okay, and um, yeah. yeah. Right. I guess I can uh, sort of, as a recent graduate, uh, give my perspective. Right, I graduated from SSC in 2019, so what three years in the labor market, right? Uh, three years with Printful, um, and. Um, Sort of you, uh, you were asking sort of why are, where are we losing those nine percent, right? Why why are they are not sort of reaching the, the top and not starting their entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey, right? And I think um, that goes together to the education part, right? There are educational courses where you can actually teach sort of how to evaluate companies, uh, what to do in investment pitch, but then there's also the ex educational part is experience sort of sharing, right? Uh, companies. Who succeed coming to the uh, to the to the sort of university graduates or students, right? Uh, and not only to the SEC but to other universities as well, and trying to sort of persuade the message and tell about their story, and and that's how to inspire those uh, students. Because me myself, I guess I lacked quite a bit of this startup um, education, which is not necessarily very hard skills, but to some extent more soft skills until I joined the sort of labor market. So I think even SSC we have. Uh, maybe courses we could introduce, right? Uh, uh, things we can learn from sort of achievers, right? From Silicon Valley, etc., uh, and then get that to the uh, students, right? Educate them on maybe content they should listen to. Um, I don't know how I built this great podcast or acquired great podcast, right? Uh, these are the things I, I learned in the in the in the labor market and got to know in the labor market. But I think universities and and, and, uh, and schools can help with that and uh, providing tools for these 9% uh, to succeed in their entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey. So you, you, ha you, you still have to be next to someone who you can see how, how they're de making the money and in a way to show the ropes uh, to, and, and, and get, get, the kind of get influ influenced. Yeah? yeah, absolutely. Okay, Indrak? Yeah, I just want to add, uh, yeah. no, um, it's uh, between Latvia and Estonian ecosystem, but uh, uh, as you as you mentioned, that uh, we need to educate people, but uh, uh, who the founder is, it's a uh, is entrepreneur. You cannot uh, you cannot teach uh, entrepreneurs. You, you cannot uh, show how. But Estonia, because it's a very small country, it's uh, 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 in 
beginning, uh, from 25 years ago, with very open economy. Very simple openness is, uh, is a one key word. For uh, so companies, they are, they are working very, very openly, and uh, and, uh, and that's that's one key reason. <laughs> I could add yeah, that uh, there's envy. You know, I remember in Estonia there was always this. Where is our Nokia coming from? Like, you know, from a very early days when uh, World Finns had really made it big in the telecom sector. And so maybe now we are actually at the birth of this envy of Estonian startups. So that's going to drive like the Latvian unicorns uh, in, in the, the future. future. No, I mean, that, that's a joke, obviously. But I think this culture, culture means a lot, like in a way that the, the uh, the, the uh, role models or the, me the the understanding that actually the success is not like uh, something which is like in textbooks, but you can actually see those people and you you know what they did. Yeah, as as, as we know, the cul culture eats the strategy for breakfast. So, um, so, but the question is then how to improve it. But okay, um, finishing off with this uh, at this stage for uh, cons uh, concerning the startups on the early early stage, maybe any questions here at the moment. You would like to ask? Yes, please. Um, you, you. Oh. Yeah, we can. But the question. has been quite many success stories in the Baltics lately, such as uh, JetFab, Nordigen, uh, Five Drive, Very Planet Forty Two. Uh, from Baltic uh, investors' perspective, has it uh, somehow made it harder to invest as, it, as the success stories, they attract more uh, larger VC funds uh, from abroad? So, this one. So, um, so I think we were talking now about early stage. So still at the early stage. So in my view of the VC industry is sort of in two, two, two layers. So you have the early stage VC seed, and then you have A growth and beyond. Um, the A growth and beyond stage of funding is now truly a global market. So it's not even a regional pan-European US, it's really a global market. So we had a company that in Lithuania, Interactio raised a Series A round, $30 million Series A round led by a Silicon Valley fund that didn't even fly yet before they closed the round, right? So it's a different world. And so that's the Series A, D, and beyond. Um, it, Early stage pre seed and seed. One of the reasons I'm at that stage is because you can still compete. I don't have to, you know, win against all the big Silicon Valley funds on every single deal, right? So, still at the early stage, you know, it's the business is much more precarious. There's much more hands-on involvement needed to, to help people succeed, um, and so there is much more value to having an investor that's physically close and nearby and, and, and can support. So there's more room for local investors to run, to win. <laughs> So, but I'm done with my comments, so. Uh, did that answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it's, it's a bifurcated market now. As, as, as regards technology, startups, high growth, venture funded startups, that's, you know, most of other markets are not bifurcated, but that particular market is. Yeah, I don't think that our market is only heated the way the, uh, 
United States market some, uh, some places. Well, if you ask the investors who lost 40% on their shares, you wouldn't say it's overheated anymore. So, um. <laughs> I mean, venture capital uh, kind of like more, more. Because it, it seemed at the moment that uh, everyone was chasing uh, the maddest ideas. And they, they will chase the maddest ideas, but now they're investing at 40% lower prices uh, than they were three months ago. So, you know, the venture industry adjusts to public markets as well. It happens first at the growth stage, which is the closest to the market. So if you're, if you're investing in a company at 250 million euro valuation in the expectation that it's going to be a billion dollar company and you have a 4x return, if the billion dollar companies you're referencing against are now worth half, half a billion, you're only now looking at a 2x return on your investments, so you're wondering if 250 million is the right price. So that adjustment happens pretty fast, actually in three to six months in, in the markets. And then that gradually you know, comes down the chain, which takes a while, but that's a, a, slow, you know, a slow adjustment, I'd say. Okay, so, so maybe we can kind of like move on, if no one wants to add it, uh, uh, for this here, the, the kind of like later stage of investing. This one then. Uh, the late, later stage, uh, um, uh, concerning this, this uh, uh, let, let's say, um, expansion uh, and, and uh, uh, the, the uh, investing ecosystem for the uh, start, startups beyond the uh, prototype, and, and but, but when we grow the business, are we as good in, in, in uh, Latvia for the growing the ne for the next stage as we should be? And, and uh, uh, are the uh, VC fund funding available at the moment? I personally think it's a lot of available right now in the Baltics, but uh, maybe maybe there are different different views. And uh, uh, we, I think uh, in world and as well in Europe, in many places they're trying to create the Silicon Valley, so to say. Uh, the question is, are, are there any chances for Silicon Points in the Baltics beyond the visual thinking, as I formulated that? Uh, or, or, or uh, that's not not the way to talk about that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, because I'm not like say uh, day to day uh, operating on a sort of a, like an investment. Uh, vehicle level, um, so it's Andres most probably is the best person to uh, to uh, to talk about that. It seems to me that uh, that there is like a person let's say who has been raising capital over the last five years quite quite a few times. Um, I would say that, that there is actually quite a lot of capital around. Um, I think the the uh, the question is that a lot of these. Um, um, you know, entrepreneurs who have exited or partially exited or have uh, given birth to teams who have made the money through options, they are all investors nowadays and they are actually quite professional. So, um, so they, they, they do know quite well uh, what they are looking at, uh, what are the kind of like, you know, key parameters for success for themselves. And I think it's a sort of a game of numbers. The more numbers financing, you know, options you have, the more you will find those people who either believe in you or uh, to actually understand the business case. Because, I mean, there is most probably quite a lot of uh, also specialization in, in industries or, or investors' views as well. Uh, at, at least some uh, people who have experience in, in doing one type of uh, investments into sort of certain companies, they might not necessarily look at others. And so obviously the more investors you have around, uh, the more likelihood you have uh, in uh, in uh, getting there. So I'm actually quite optimistic, to be honest with you. I and and I think this sort of uh, the European funding that has gone into many of those uh, funds as well, it has really helped uh, to uh, to put that industry on its feet. And if we compare it, let's say to to 10, 15 years ago, then uh, then I think it's uh, it's a good time to start a company. Yeah. No, I mean, like, I think the Silicon Valley is the hashtag Estonian mafia. I mean, uh, I think you need to do, you need to be very clever about branding. And I think, like, sort of that, uh, that, and 
most probably it's uh, it, uh, kind of a like in Latvian case it it should be something as well like you know how you brand yourself and how you basically make yourself sticky uh, but more than this branding itself I think it's really the professional networks that emerges from those startups that have actually brought in uh, you know Silicon Valley investors and then you know if you have an Estonian investor who has that network to basically bring in uh, also other investors then uh, then that sort of helps so Silicon Valley is also a brand name so <laughs> so uh, Estonian Mafia is as much of a brand name and I think uh, kind of a question is how to yeah maybe there should be something like a key key word for Latvia Well, you have to stick together, so you can go to the same synagogue. Yeah, and, and I think um, the role of Silicon Valley, as it has been over the past 20 years, will never be the way it was, right? That, that, so I, I went to business school in the Valley during the first dot-com boom. It was insane. The Valley is still a place where there's amazing businesses, amazing investors, etc., but it is no longer the nub of the universe and it is no longer the only place you can build a massively successful company. You can do that out of any place on the planet now, any place. Some places more likely, the Baltics being higher up on the list, um, but you can do that anywhere and that's because the capital is no longer only concentrated there, um, the expertise is no longer only concentrated there and the fact that um, the world's top venture investors, Sequoia, Andreessen, uh, Index, Axel, and everyone are running around all three Baltic states looking for investments means you know this is also a place where you can generate massive uh, success stories, right? And so that is fundamentally different from what happened before. And there's you can read all about it. So the cloud had an impact, you know, the the pandemic had an impact with capital being more widespread, all sorts of things. But that's the outcome, and that's great news for everyone here because if you, you know for the class of '97 didn't have that opportunity that you know you guys have now um, so it's it is you know I'm a huge believer in the next 10 15 years because it's fundamentally different opportunities uh, hmm? right. it's okay now it works uh, finally uh, 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 yeah, maybe, maybe uh, Beatrice uh, want a word on this? No. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or you, you already did. I, I didn't notice, sorry. No, I can, well, t talking about that middle phase uh, for the financing, uh, representing NASDAQ, I can say that uh, now stock exchange can also play uh, an increasing role in, in, in that stage. Uh, of course, still, it's, it's uh, financial investors, so it's not smart money. I guess every startup would wish to get like X Skype and, uh, and TransferWise guys uh, investing because that opens totally another you know, level of doors and windows and so on uh, for future growth. Uh, but when it comes to financing, that's available. What we've seen over the last year, and it's literally one year, uh, at Baltic uh, exchanges, Nasdaq Tallinn, Nasdaq Riga, uh, very small companies come to the markets and raise money. And that's very different how it was because stock exchange was kind of perceived as, uh, as a means for different life cycle, even exits if you like. Now we've seen five companies literally raised one million or less over the last year. Uh, the last one yet uh, this year, Aerobot. They raised 600K, uh, 4,000 investors. So we talk about literally less than 100 uh, euros per investor that are there voting with their money and companies can, can use it. Or there was uh, Hagen bikes, they, they are into cargo uh, bikes. Six and a half thousand investors and they raised just half a million. So that was not possible just years ago because IPO process associates with a lot of cost and, and consultants have to be attracted and so on. Uh, these days, uh, together with the industry, we, we at NASDAQ have succeeded to create that ecosystem and it's rolling. So with relatively little uh, fixed investment, 
you, you provide the, the information to the market through information memorandum. Uh, you know, the placement mechanisms are there. Uh, there is a lot of money, I, I can only agree to, there is a lot of uh, money uh, available, especially if, you, if you've heard then, then in Estonia last year there was um, a controversial uh, pension reform executed where, where people were allowed to withdraw their second pillar of pension money. So I think it's not good, but, but luckily some of that money that was withdrawn from the system came back. Uh, into the into the market, so there's a lot of investors that are, are ready to invest, and and I think that's another opportunity for startup guys to to get access to. So it's a, effectively you go through the stock exchange. If you like, but I mean, again, like I said, startups probably want those ex uh, unicorn exiters as their primary investors, of course. But uh, you know, having. NASDAQ listing is not too bad either. It, it adds a lot to credibility, uh, to the visibility, and of course, there are there are checks that you know under you are under the supervision of the FSA if you're listed uh, company and and uh, you know it's it, it's checked. It's certainly uh, safe to invest these days uh, on on stock market. There's a lot of protection. It's very different with different kind of platforms where there are no even basic checks and, and guarantees. So I don't want to talk about that. But what I can say is that if it's a, if it's a listing, either on main market or, or be trading on alternative markets like, like First North, the, the security for investors is, is there. I mean, sometimes in, in Europe we overdo. Because of what you said, you, you can easily invest in all kinds of platforms, uh, just like that. And then, when it when it comes to to list, uh, sorry, to, to investments in in stock markets, then then suddenly it it, it becomes so, so difficult, you know, with the KYC process and so on. So I, I don't think we always strike the balance well there in terms of regulation in EU. But but anyway, I, I leave it there. It's it's safe to invest in 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 stocks which are listed at Nasdaq. That's for sure. I uh, wanted to say it from uh, as a support uh, to 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 that uh, stock markets do work. I mean, uh, I'm representing here today Indexo, which is uh, sort of a startup. It's not global; it's local. But uh, we have been uh, quite successful in uh, in uh, disrupting the uh, retirement uh, management uh, or pension fund industry, and are actually going to get a bank license. So, uh, and then part of that is going to be uh, actually listing our stock. Uh, or shares in the stock exchange, so but it does work for certain founders and certain startups, but uh, it's not always the case. So so I think as an entrepreneur, let's say if we kind of try to give here you a, a rule book or something, then you need to basically see also what is the the, the management effort that is uh, is needed to to keep a company uh, listed and and uh, and uh, you know how much sort of strings and. Uh, get attached to you because of that. Uh, plus, also, I think, like again, uh, from a venture capital industry, uh, especially in the, I don't know, like uh, A, B, C, I don't know, the rounds, you might have actually shareholder agreements, which are, let's say, much uh, more difficult to have in a, in a sort of a context of uh, stock exchange. So uh, it a little bit depends on who are your f early founding partners as well, or funding partners. Uh, uh, is, is, are Baltic stock exchanges ready for the SPACs? Uh, ready to uh, kind of like the comp uh, uh, card launch uh, companies go going? Uh, yes, actually, as we speak, the, uh, the, the, the documentation is, is under the preparations, and, and uh, in, in, in a few months' time, there is going to be also. Um, added uh, that piece as specific regulation. You, you al al already now you you can have a spec type of uh, uh, listing, but but there are some nuanced regulation in in support of that, and that's being worked out. And and probably in a few months' time, it's going to be there for the for the Baltic specs. So you're feeding frenzy uh, for for the uh, takeovers and, and and many interesting deals. Just a small uh, remark, that, uh, in Estonia there was an alternative uh, exchange, uh, um, the Thunderbeam. It's like similar, but it's, uh, it's again like First North and they 
Mm, Thunderbeam is for smaller companies. If you, are, if you want to raise a significant amount of money, starting from 20 or 30 million, then probably uh, you need to go somewhere outside. Uh, if, if you look the Estonian, uh, we call this Estonian unicorns, 10 of them, but uh, five at least, uh, they're local, and five are registered uh, headquarters outside Estonia, which means that it's uh, crucial to uh, to go outside, to, to find the uh, mm, additional uh, money outside Estonia. Uh, maybe what I could add to this discussion, maybe also to summarize that, at least in my experience, what I have seen that uh, each situation is unique. For one situation, it's great to go to stock exchange, especially if the company is more stable. But also I have seen that the there are opportunities in Latvian market. And uh, two of my friends, uh, three years ago, they left their job because they came up with a great idea for a startup. Uh, and they were working in a bank in very good positions and they decided to do their own company. And actually they have uh, succeeded so far and they have even attracted here in Latvia an investor from India who actually believes in the startup in the and then its su success in Indian market. So uh, I think the world is full of opportunities and uh, you should be brave and, and do uh, what you like, especially if you believe this idea. Uh, w one more uh, further question for me would be, you know, the, uh, uh, historically there are two kind of like peaks for the uh, venture, uh, for the startupers, 20 plus and then the 40 plus. And actually the people who start kind of like businesses 40 plus, they are somewhat more successful. So how, how, how is it in, in, in the Baltics? Uh, do, we, do we have these... Uh, uh, young spirits out of the uh, out of the effectively the school, uh, even if that school is a C or or um, um, uh, the people who have kind of like been around and seen and then uh, decide to, uh, to create the companies. Any comments on that? Comment, but uh, I guess principal we had a founder who didn't go to no, he went to university right but I mean started working in drug room from the beginning right that stopped six months and then we also had a founder group who who were serial entrepreneurs right and I guess 35 plus or not sure on the age but certainly about 30 right uh, so I guess maybe the mixture of both is is a good fit uh, in this context but uh, so yeah I think that's a good fit and maybe going back to to sort of comment on, on the stock exchange and, and capital being available I guess it is available uh, quite a bit especially for principal was right uh, but uh, there was this comment uh, that not sort of stock exchange doesn't work for all of uh, founders right and, and I guess in principal story um, uh, we with the growth stage right we we try to finance as much as we can uh, ourselves right and and then when needed we try to at attract but obviously being listed requires quite a bit of administrative work and etc which uh, slows that would slow down a company would make it more bureaucratic right and at the growth stage at principal we decided not to do it we, we we had the luxury to afford it but but yeah we decided not to do it so I guess it's very very much a question whether you need it or, or not okay yeah so um, regarding age of entrepreneurs so um, there are many different kinds of entre entrepreneurs all different ages and they each have you know advantages of their own so we've backed some some Membi was a, an example of a young Lithuanian founder team um, and we have others that are much more experienced entrepreneurs we've backed um, so they just have different backgrounds and different advantages if you're 25 you have you know on average more energy than uh, than others and you can just power through and do an amazing amount of stuff um, on the other hand if you're 40 maybe you have more experience and therefore you make less mistakes and so you can spend less time powering through those mistakes so you know they're all pros and cons but i think the the common thing is as jit said you know there's there's ultimately a uh, uh a personal characteristic that people who are founders have which is you know they're comfortable taking significant risks making decisions under great uncertainty um, inspiring others, you know, to follow a a vision, a plan for the future, which is, you know, has a high likelihood of not happening, but they're able to inspire people to go after that despite the risk, right? And so those are personal characteristics which um, typically either people have or don't have, but um, may discover 
if 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 they try, and I think that's that's really the most important thing. Okay. Um, if no, no one wants to add, I have a further further question. So it's very good that we have here on the panel the Printful on this bit because Printful actually has been working as a, as another Printful, but the Draghi Group has been working as a, uh, effectively as a venture capital fund. It, it, the inside, they, they got the money from, from Draugiam, from, from the pr first project, I guess, and, and then uh, they funded uh, lots of different ideas, and, and most of these ideas uh, died, or uh, they extinguished them, and, and then kind of like, effectively, the inside the company, they did the work like, like the venture capital funds do that. And, and uh, the ratio, uh, nine, one uh, is a very familiar one, I think, and, and, and or, uh, has been in this industry. And then it, Andres, who has as well a, a rather big company, who, who is saying no uh, to, uh, to at least the, all the outside uh, businesses and, and, and focusing on, on, on his, uh, his core co competence and, 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 and uh, you know, strategy is what, what we are not doing, not what we are doing. And, and, and then uh, the companies like, like Draugian Group uh, compete with the venture capitalists like, uh, like Andres and uh, my, myself in, in, in ZGAI. Uh, uh, but but I, I wonder if there are two models which somehow compete or we are uh, kind of like the, the two sides of the same coin, these two approaches. In, in, in company, in-house venture capital, so to say, and uh, open kind of like venture capital fund, uh, the cl classical with the with the limited the partners and general partners and so on. What's your comment? Whether they compete or not, I'm not, not sure. Uh, I mean, in a sense, they do the same thing, right? Uh, Principal Dragon Group, they had Dragon Group had hundred ideas, right, or, or plus ideas, and and what you what you basically get is you can test the idea, but then you have this administrative efforts and, and legal efforts and and, and, and sort of uh, guidance and, and and perspective provided by the existing founders, right? And I think many companies has hundred of nice to have ideas, right, that might be uh, directly related to the uh, business model or not directly related to the business model, right? And this in-house we see fund, right, gives you the opportunity to, to test them out, right? Maybe sort of project team wouldn't have resources to actually do it versus you have this uh, part, of the, uh, part of the business that can go and, and test them out. So I don't think they necessarily compete with the VCs, but... Uh, that's good thing that that we have these right uh, um, inside funds, inside funds, inside funds that can allow testing uh, new ideas and experimenting with uh, with, with, yeah, with new business opportunities, um, and 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 to some extent maybe make it more efficient from the resource perspective. Right, you don't have to go in and raise money. Right, you uh, you test that you see whether it f sticks or not. Right, and and then you either sort of scale it or, or, or abandon the idea, right? So maybe at the early stage, it, it gives you more sort of freedom. You can move a bit faster. Um, that's at least our perspective, right? But uh, but I don't think they really compete. One just has the uh, sort of uh, benefit of larger company that can help with all these, uh, all these things uh, mentioned before. Maybe some small comment on that. Uh, if it's two ways uh, to to do a in in house investments uh, in new projects or or uh, take them uh, from outside that most uh, i think the important part is uh, how an entrepreneur uh, is is feeling more okay to risk put on risk own money or someone else and then to uh, maybe not to feel so good uh, in, in relations with them and and that's the philosophy of each of different persons yes and we we are feeling more okay to spend our own or to to lose our own money uh then we are not not uh, feeling uh, bad or, or sorry for someone else so so that's just our fail and and, and that's all okay thank you and uh, Anders, what's your perspective on this or you think it is it, it's the false question in a way so it's just to no so i'm not sure if this Competition, I think actually it's, um, there's competition in some sense in the market for talent um, because all the companies, uh, regardless of how they're created or incubated, need talent to grow big. And so that is the market they mainly compete in. And ultimately, you know, Printful and print, Printify are competing with, for customers at some point in a global market, right? But um, 
but they're not really competing for investment dollars. I think the, you know, the philosophy we have um, as a venture investor is, is we are looking at um, all of our investments as standalone businesses, um, and uh, we are uh, very concerned that the founders of those businesses retain sufficient ownership, such that they are highly incentivized to do unbelievably crazy and great and awesome things in order to build great businesses, right? And so, um, so that is why we actually do, we have not funded any uh, spin-off companies from other, we do get approached occasionally to fund spin-offs from uh, corporate uh, uh, en entities where the parent company has a significant ownership and we generally decline because for us it's really important that the actual the people doing the work full time, like morning to night, you know, uh, building the businesses, that they have a significant ownership stake because we feel that's important in order to build a sizable company, at least in in the model we operate. And and I think um, uh, you know that's that's one of the differences. And actually, I remember one other thing I wanted to add that I maybe didn't explain. So in regard to the founders, you know, who are starting these companies. Um, uh, so for those of you who heard my previous comments and said, mm, I'm not really ready to take those risks, I guess I can't work in a startup, that's also not the case. So you can go work at a startup someone else starts. Um, you don't have to be the founder, and in fact, it's the best way to figure out if this is going to be for you because you don't actually have to go raise the money and lead the company. You can watch someone else do that and see if you want to try it yourself. Um, but it does mean you can work in a company. If they're any good, you can work in a company that grows very fast. So so I actually spent 15 years of my career working as a um, early hire, uh, C-level executive in a bunch of different startups in the US, Israel, UK, um, uh, where I wasn't a founder, and then I became a founder afterwards. And it's a great way to learn what fast growth and building businesses is is about. So, um, just to add a comment on that. Yeah, because the learning process in the venture capital all, always uh, is is, uh, is costing someone. It's better not to not to be the one picking up the bill at least at the beginning. But there are different ways. Some people just you know, <laughs> by nature do nothing but start businesses, and that's just like obvious for them, right? But that's not everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you, do you want something? Yeah. No, I just wanted to add but that, that you shouldn't really fare too much about this, um, uh, let's say, asking other people's money. Uh, I think it's totally normal. It's the way how business has always been built everywhere. And I think, uh, truly, I think in the Baltics, there are lots of angel investors now around operating through uh, angel networks and, uh, and other places. And uh, these people already know quite a lot about their own kind of a, like, personal risk assessment. So uh, when you go to them, if they have kind of highlighted themselves as investors, it means that uh, they are there to be approached and asked for money. And, and they are ready to assess for themselves the risks that you are taking. So, so from that point of view, that's, uh, you, you, should, you should not sort of think that, oh, you are somehow personally going to be always responsible. You are, but you know, these people know what they're doing. Maybe one more view uh, about in, uh, investment. Uh, if you compare Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, there is a mm, uh, differences. What, what I see that in Estonia, there are uh, investors, are, a lot of investors are founders who sold the companies, they openly, and, and uh, then they put the money in the, in the new entities. In Lithuania, what, what, we, what we see that uh, mm, uh, th there is no, like, uh, uh, no so much uh, su succeed stories, bec uh, uh, but uh, but in really uh, they have it. But th they have a lot of bootstrapped companies who never raise the money. They they grow and they profitable, and they invest in new entities. So so in in real life, if we look uh, more deep, uh, uh, yes, there is a little bit dif different situation. But uh, but they they invest as well. It depends now what the founder and uh, or startup founder or they in what stage they are, what kind of investor they need. Uh, uh, th there is uh, if you can choose if you're a good company, good idea, you can 
you can uh, make a decision who you like to be an investor or uh, who you didn't like. That's uh, they uh, some VCs have more mm, more maybe questions or more uh, uh, they want more uh, uh, rights to them, um, and uh, and that's why maybe they afraid to to get these these uh, VCs. They maybe rather give to uh, friends who they knows or or uh, some local guys. Uh, and that's that's maybe one point of view. Gradual approach to take the take the risks in a, in a way, and and for the entrepreneurs to be looking for the new business lines in this way through the kind of uh, such. Okay. Yeah, and in the end, there's no shame in building a bootstrap business that doesn't take money from anyone else, right? There's no that's like you build a great business that makes money, super, right? Um, it's like the whole VC startup thing is all sexy and everyone wants to raise, you know, companies that, you know, blah, 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 publicly valued and everything. And there's among some of the very successful bootstrap founders, you can see there's this sort of, you know, VC funded startup envy that they'd like to see the actual tag on their company that it's worth a billion dollars. But actually they like the trade off that they have control over what they're doing. And that's, that's a trade off, right? And, you know, it's a choice that's valid. Okay, so we moving, I think, uh, getting clo closer to, to the uh, end part of it. So uh, how successful we, we, uh, successfully we held the transition to growth for our companies in Europe-wide Europe and global markets and uh, are the VC players and banks up to the task and well connected to, to, to global uh, VC players and financial industry to finance that growth. So are we helping well enough our companies to grow out of the markets? Okay, you told about the companies which start immediately in the global markets and don't have this local phase, so to say, but, but nevertheless, uh, are we helping the, 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 the uh, good startup companies which probably have had uh, several funding rounds graduate to, to, be, to bigger and, and grow in, into these uh, unicorns, uh, so, so to say? Are we doing enough, or what can, could we do? What we could do more or better? So I think. Um, oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can. I mean, I can add a comment that, like, look, the best, the most successful companies simply don't need anyone here locally. To be totally honest, the Bolt founders started. They had some local angels, but at some point, they figured out how to raise money in. China and you know US and wherever else, but there are a lot of companies that are successful but not quite that successful that do benefit from having strong relationships. And so I think, you know, it's up to the investors here and and the advisors and bankers and everyone to build relationships with, with with the next round investors who can bring more capital. It's what we do every day. We have we proactively look to build relationships with investors all around the world that could be the next stage investors in the companies that we've backed already, right? And so, you know, the more that th those connections are tied into the Baltic states, the more those investors fly here, see how awesome these places are, you know, the more investments will happen. Yeah. In the short comment that they, mm, yes, there, it's, uh, it's growing, uh, the investment uh, flow is uh, growing from outside because they are, even uh, UK VC funds want to invest now in in uh, in local in, in Baltic uh, funds to, uh, to to present in uh, in this uh, region and uh, and that's it's it's only because through the the local VCs they 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 cannot uh, I think found uh, these um, companies directly but they they want to do it uh, through the and with the uh, uh, local VCs. I think from the uh, capital point of view, I think things are pretty okay. But I, I, I think still uh, um, there definitely needs to be this sort of a uh, workplace experience, uh, let's say, where where people are connected to to going, opening up new markets, thinking like innovative ways how to use the the way how you know business processes are run, which has been also totally reshuffled from, from uh, most probably 10 years ago uh, because of also startups are actively disrupting the way 
how organizations are run or what you can do outsource or, or have in, inside your company. So, and I think that uh, that, that most probably only comes uh, with, uh, with more, let's say, successful international startups having the teams uh, ready, uh, you know, who have participated in, in, uh, in launching the products in, in uh, new markets and, um, and uh, yeah, operating globally. Uh, but, uh, but I think also that's the good news is that there are quite a few companies doing that uh, nowadays. And, and I think as, uh, as uh, I very much sort of support the idea that, uh, you know, rather than uh, taking, let's say, a, a, a financial comfortable uh, job with, a, uh, with an auditor or uh, one of those Scandinavian banks, then it's uh, actually much more fun most probably to go and test yourself out in a, in a, in a startup environment and, and get that actually very valuable experience, which you wouldn't be able to get uh, when you are working for someone who maybe on paper offers you a sort of a slightly more job security and a slightly better paycheck. Um, so. Okay, but, but uh, e e even uh, uh, for, for, the, for these com companies, we and the Baltics, the Estonia, Lithuania, Lat Latvia, we, we need these big companies in a way uh, not to uh, to get away from, from the, our markets too soon because we, we expect them from these national champions in, in a way to can, uh, create, to help, uh, to, to kind of like nurture this this local uh, local industry and, and have some trickle down effect and and and, uh, and so on the, the way it was was with the, with the with this uh, Skype and other other com companies. If the people get away too uh, too fast and, and uh, grow, uh, probably as a, as a markets we we don't gain anything from that. Or am I wrong? So so I would disagree, uh, respectively. Um, so I think I think the. Um, the the reality is that the that uh, a business is made up of people, right? And so, the um, uh, uh, if you have, let's say, you know, through seed stage, even pre seed, if you have the base, the main base of operations here, um, even if the company moves headquarters, even if the CEO and even the the entire senior management team moves somewhere else, because their investors want them because there are bigger markets they're targeting, et cetera. You will build a significant base of operations here. I mean, we saw that with Skype. Uh, we've seen that with all of the success stories. So, so that with Vinted, Vinted actually had a huge Berlin office, which they actually largely shut down. And they've moved most of their operations back to Vilnius, right? And so, um, yeah, and I remember the so one of the first um, small exits in Latvia was a company called Kobuk, um, uh, which started about I don't know. 12 years now ago, and they were bought by an American startup. And that American startup um, uh, basically asked the team all to move to the US. The founder and uh, the, the two co-founders basically decided to move to Denver. Um, but most of the team said, actually, no, we don't want to move, right? And so you know, that company left their product development office here, and they still have uh, uh, an, an office here. And, and Prezi was uh, was acquired by, sorry, Infogram was acquired by Prezi in the US. They still have um, the biggest office here of the Infogram op operations. They're selling all over the world. And they're bringing knowledge and, in, and uh, experience back here, right? So I... Um, I fundamentally believe that as long as the beginnings of the business are here, um, there is absolutely nothing preventing you bringing a ton of value back here. And the reasons you move headquarters elsewhere are largely for reasons of access to capital, access to talent that you cannot get here, and for reasons of building a, a bigger business. That said, I do think it's even better if you can not move the headquarters out of the Baltics at all and Bolt was the uh, pathfinder in this sense. So Bolt has raised all of their funding rounds and they still are Estonian headquartered company. It's a remarkable achievement, right? For a company that's worth over $8 billion. Um, and the CEO has very basically point blank said, 
I want to raise my kids in Estonia. I'm not moving. Um, and all power to him. And I think, you know, that is a great example. And uh, in Lithuania, Interactio, um, that I said, raised that $30 million round, was the first Series A round raised uh, where it was US and UK investors investing into a Lithuanian headquartered company. We had lots of fights with the lawyers who said, oh, it's going to be so much easier to just flip the company to the UK. You know, and, and eventually they agreed. It wasn't actually that painful to invest in Lithuania. And we will see that trend happen. And there is a, there is a plus. So it is better, but it doesn't, you know, flipping the headquarters doesn't mean that everything goes away. Wise, for example, when Wise was started, then, uh, then uh, the founder, one of the founders was living in London and the other was living in Switzerland. So, and they decided to actually incorporate the company in Estonia and do the business in Estonia. And let's say, uh, okay, the, I, I would say that the labor costs and like, you know, good people uh, sort of start to, to more or less costs the same in Europe, right? So I, I think that in Berlin, a programmer or, or a product guy will cost the same as uh, as uh, they would in, in in the Baltics. But but uh, still, there is this uh, uh, there is a um, uh, simplicity of operating in a, in a smaller market, uh, and even that would be the case, I think, for all Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. It's because you are closer to decision makers, and and you actually can impact uh, also your field, like the regulation which actually takes, uh, like if you are a regulated industry, you can actually uh, impact the regulation by, by being able to talk to people. So I can add a printful story, right? We also sort of started as US based company in terms of operations, right? Uh, but all the sort of uh, management team and, and sort of um, office people sit in, sit in Riga, right? And they still do. And even with the, uh, raising money in the US, right, uh, for, the, for, for the, like recently, we still uh, stay in Latvia and we think we will, uh, we are quite confident that we will, the management team and, and the other uh, people will stay and, and create jobs here um, to, to, to help the Baltic economy. And also, yeah, as mentioned, right, it's easier. We have better connections with, with governmental institutions. We, we uh, can get things done quicker, faster, and then it's just, uh, makes much sense for us to stay here uh, and remain as a Latvian company. Uh, and, uh, we, we're talking about the, the big, comp, uh, uh, big, big uh, bigger startups, uh, the pre-unicorns, uh, pre so to say, or unicorn stage. Any, anything more what the stock exchange could do that? Uh, or, or because we, we, we see, uh, we understand that the print, Printful uh, has been toying with the idea uh, to to be uh, to get quoted on, on the Nasdaq or whatever, but in New York, I guess, uh, or or, or uh, but is there anything the the local stock exchanges could could help uh, in in that respect, for 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 the big big relatively young and up and coming companies, which probably sometimes are not uh, not pro pro uh, profitable as we see in the uh, st states. Um, I guess the pr printful is pro profitable, but. Well, I, I believe we are simply blessed having NASDAQ being represented in this region. I can tell that there are many larger countries that, uh, that wish they had that kind of stock exchange uh, represented locally. Uh, NASDAQ is, is the leading stock exchange uh, in the world. And, and as I mentioned, uh, what has changed over the last couple of years is that even very small companies can join the markets at, at little cost having the first gains of visibility uh, and then later on perhaps becoming uh, blue chips and uh, we've, we've seen now and, and partially that was actually related to COVID maybe people had more free time they certainly had still sort of uh, money and many of them started in investing so we we've seen like tenfold trading volume so there is also uh, after trading uh, liquidity, you can exit your uh, positions. All of it is, is available and, uh, and local investor base is growing. I mentioned some examples of very small companies that have five or 10,000 uh, investors and some of them may become your loyal customers actually of, of that listed company. And then bigger companies like Enefit, brilliant example, uh, last autumn, uh, they attracted over 60,000 retail 
investors. That that's beat beats any any ratios in in the in the world. So I believe uh, this is unique opportunity that local companies, local startups included, uh, have. Whether that's fit for them, that's another question. There was an example of Printful. Maybe at some stage you just don't want yet to be listed. It it comes with with its own requirements. Um, you know, you may have uh, you know other markets considered, but I think you you know you can have local option at Nasdaq. You can have Nasdaq Stockholm, which is a European hub for many SMEs sectors. Again, fantastic, fantastic uh, ecosystem for for micro investments and and some of the industries just list in Stockholm, like gaming being a perfect example. And, and then you go all the way to, to, to NASDAQ in the New York, which is still first choice for all technology uh, companies. And, and that's the options. I think that you can't ask really much more from, from Stock Exchange to, to do in terms of uh, startups development. I think the challenge for, for Latvia in particular is to get those uh, retail accounts opened. And you know everybody who doubles here in cryptocurrencies or anything uh, like that unholy uh, <laughs> also consider investing into, into the local stock exchange because I think people do actually you know, uh, have found a way of how to, to you know, invest or what, let's say, I, I don't really call it investing, but uh, that's my personal view. But, uh, but um, if, uh, if you were to, to, to sort of think how many accounts most probably are there, uh, sort of chasing uh, different investment ideas already uh, on, a, on a very small scale, then uh, if all those people would be converting into actually investing into local stock exchange, we would have actually, you know, quite a huge growth in, uh, in people who would, uh, who would invest and, uh, and definitely a very good platform. Yeah, but in, in Latvia, again, a few perfect examples from last year. Okay, the, these were not startups, uh, but just, just known companies. Virši, the, the local petrol station, 10,000 investors. Um, remarkable. I mean, uh, you know, all the companies are welcome to, to tap into that investor base. Different thing whether that's fit for that stage of the company. Um, that, that's different, different story. Anyone to, to add at this point? No, then we, then we uh, go for the uh, last and, and uh, before we take uh, questions, which is okay, the thinking big was mentioned here already, but I think we, let's try to dream big and, and uh, where, where we could, could go with our startups and, and uh, co companies and unicorns and, and uh, overall business development of, in, in, I don't know, let's say next 20 years. So. Where we want to be, where we could do, uh, thinking uh, realistically at the same time aggressively about uh, the the, uh, the 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 companies and the markets. So I'm gonna a little bit repeat myself. We can be better than Israel. So everyone's heard the Israel story, startup nation. There are books written about it. The Israelis are very proud of it. Uh, we can be better than Israel. We can be bigger than Israel, um, and uh, that's absolutely possible. And um, you know, I think that's uh, that's a goal that that uh, the three Baltic states could do together. None of them are big enough to do it on their own, um, but uh, but the three together is a is a viable size um, to you know present that. And I can tell you, I this is the story I tell investors um, who I am trying to sell investing in our fund. Um, so the the investors that um, that Indrek talked talk, talked about, I sell them the story of. The Baltic states will be the next Israel, and believe me, it sells very well. It's a it's a great story. Right. If we compile uh, last year the technology top, uh, then then we see that um, there was a uh, approximately mm, billion dollars uh, billion euros uh, funding last year in Estonia. And this year, th three months, there was a the same number already. And if we if we just uh, uh, see the projection and and uh, look back what uh, what situation was ten years ago, uh, it was a uh, I don't know maybe eight eight million uh, funding and and uh, and if we if we, uh, for example, say that we grow 25% per year, there will be within 10, year, uh, 10 years approximately 6 billion funding 
per year and then uh, all together 30 billion uh, funding so uh, uh, that's that might be uh, like not uh, utopic but uh, real uh, real thing There is a mm, place for uh, much more bigger activities, practically in any any kind of, of uh, economical uh, uh, parts in Latvia, because there is, uh, as I have a feeling that, or uh, how I'm evaluating that, that it's now um, uh, everything for that uh, is available. There's a lot of finance uh, resources available. There is a problems to allocate them. Uh, there is a uh, euro funds uh, to help to in this early stage of growing or or, or uh, financing the investments later and so on. So so uh, the the only thing uh, coming back one more time is the the ambitions. Generally, what you need to uh, grow and to to develop in the in the whole society uh, and uh, the general uh, environment and and climate on on the. Uh, business side and government side. Um, I think that also if we look at the education, this is really important part and we have touched this uh, today already a few times and uh, compared to when I was in high school or in university, actually there are so many more opportunities right now to create uh, startup companies even in high school. This is quite, quite uh, a standard at the moment and, uh, and, and this is something where we actually need to invest and even maybe some successful startups could do more of their PR locally by visiting schools and then encouraging youth to, to, to follow this path. And I think we should share more uh, these good examples that we have uh, and even those examples that, that have failed just just to encourage uh, the people uh, to, to, to be more brave, as I mentioned before, and, and to, to risk and, and to even get, get big wins by risking. And uh, another thing is a cultural thing. And uh, here, at least, again, I, I see a huge difference between Estonia and Latvia, that uh, Estonians are usually covering each other's back more than we are. And uh, be because Estonians are proud to support their own uh, startups, their own companies, and then they are proud, proud of that, and they love to buy those products. But I haven't seen this trend in Latvians, and, and this is something that we should think about more, how we can support each other rather than, uh, oh, this is Latvia, no, it will be bad, I will try maybe to, to, to use some other product. So this, this is something that is still there, and I think uh, by, by, by the change of society, this will become better, but I think we should also support that and help to change the mindset. Sorry, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I think like uh, the patriotism or like uh, I think the, the idea that uh, working locally uh, can make things better is, is uh, really important. And, uh, and I think that uh, that actually is uh, why I'm not, uh, it's not a question like how many or when will be the next unicorns, but it will, it's going to be a matter of, uh, of uh, normality. Uh, because I think, like uh, especially again, like looking more at the Estonian uh, startup founders, big ones whom I know, they are all very proud to invest back and and want to invest back. And I think that sort of a uh, feeling that uh, that because we are like w working in so small societies, uh, you know, everybody can have an impact on what what is the environment we'll, where we live in is actually like a huge bonus because if you are a citizen of the United States of America, maybe you have less of an impact uh, in uh, how your country is going to come across. So anyway, I think from that point of view, it's, it's, uh, it's really a done deal. I mean, there's going to be plenty, plenty uh, unicorns uh, growing from here. And, and actually, there is also, I think, uh, you know, in, you know, enough founders who will, uh, who will make sure that they will invest back and, and put money into those uh, new founders uh, to, to make that happen. I guess I don't have much to add. I guess I can probably summarize what, what the guys said here, right, and, and, and lady, right? So basically, uh, I guess one thing is to, to get those people inspired, right? To get them more ambitious, to get them excited about an entrepreneurship. And even if there's not only 9%, right, then, then getting to these 9%, uh, right? Getting those sort of 
soft and, and hard skills they need and, and knowledge they need, right? And then I guess the other colleagues from the VC world, right, um, said we're kind of having the capital there, right? And and then probably um, being more patriotic and giving back, right, uh, will help and to us get to 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 sort of overcome Tel Aviv, Israel, right, as the as the um, startup hub uh, in, in Europe. So effectively, you, you, uh, the, they had uh, Draugium, uh, which is still uh, f functioning, and then, the, okay, there are a few other uh, projects which, which from these 100 which are uh, doing quite well, but, but the Printful, so in a way it's two, uh, it's Draugium and now it's Printful, the, the big, the big uh, what it seems to be big uh, success, uh, and uh, do, you, do you think the, uh, you, you, you will go ahead and, and uh, find uh, another one or several new? new potential unicorns in, I don't know, next 20, 20, uh, 20 years? No, we certainly hope so, right? Uh, Draugrim Group, uh, Printful was, was born out of a uh, business incubator in Draugrim Group called IdeaBits. Now Printful has its own business incubator called uh, Printful Bits, right? And, and we are constantly evolving, evaluating business ideas and, and testing them out, right? We have a team working on that and then hopefully some uh, someone someone will become unicorn in, 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 in sort of Unicorn, yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. Maybe one, um, one, uh, one thing to add, that the uh, Estonian founders and uh, those who uh, uh, to have a, uh, a lot of money now, and, but they, they also have a great impact, social impact to, to society. So they, they not try to uh, buy something from government to, to, to get more uh, the good contracts, but otherwise they they want to uh, to be economy more open and uh, and give a pressure to 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 government to do this and uh, and they are they are they, they show uh, as as they do they show the uh, to uh, to younger founders and to to other members of society um, how. Uh, no, how how to earn money and uh, how to react to responsibility, no, more responsible. Yeah, of which the uh, the co the new coding school, which um, which the startup community in Estonia has started, is a great example. And actually, that's one last point I wanted to make about culture as well. So I think one of the things that's very important um, that is definitely prevalent in Latvia is to change the mindset about uh, what it means to be a, um, a business founder, a businessman, because that has had a bad connotation. And actually, um, I'd really like you to think about um, starting a business as an act of uh, social generosity, because um, those people who are starting businesses, uh, when they're successful, they create jobs. And 90% of the population is going to be a job taken on a job giver. They're going to be employees, not employers. And so those people who create businesses that create jobs are actually um, fundamentally important for our society to grow and improve and for many people to have a great life, right? And so that is, you know, uh, there's some negative con connotations often around people who are in business. And actually, it is a very, very important function in society for people to be able to create jobs. And it's entrepreneurs that create jobs. It's not governments. It's entrepreneurs who build businesses that then employ others. Okay. Uh, thank you. I think uh, that's a very good point, unless any anyone else has some remarks. But now we take some questions, I hope. Prudential in, in 99, which is 20, almost 23 years ago. And at the, st at the beginning, we, we, we have been all, all, all the time, most of our employees have come from SSC. We have found them to be, be uh, the, the be best quality and most ready for work, so to say, uh, uh, to, to, to work in, a, in our investment banking uh, field. But what we have noticed is that uh, at the beginning, everyone in the SSC wanted to f work in the finance industry. And, s and then after 2008, it started to change. Everyone wanted to kind of like be was ready to accept lower startups. So I hope there is plenty of questions for you because we have such a great panel and, and, uh, and uh, we have the distinguished uh, people in the, in the field. So uh, yeah.
you so much for the great uh, insights. So today we talk a lot about positive things, which was really good. But what's happening now around the neighborhood is also a big concern. And like we talk about the capital flow, about the the market, and also like all startup environments. So what's the impact of like what's going on in the neighborhood and like to the Baltic? Um, uh, startup ecosystem and how the capital market is like doing so. Is it going uh, out of like Baltic countries or is it coming? And, and, and so, and what can Baltic countries do to, in order to kind of help those startups that they were uh, kind of shut dead, like, especially in like Ukraine, like there were like lots of cool startups, but now they are like not active, so. Yeah. So uh, the question is about the, the red, red, red elephant in the neighborhood, so. So what's our We are sort of in a capital raising uh, mode at the moment. So uh, I can tell you from my personal experience how I view it. Um, uh, I think sort of like talking about risk, uh, certainly if you live in a border area anywhere, you are always uh, need to sort of think about like, uh, you know, the, the events that are, I don't know, some kind of probability that will happen with you. And uh, if you adopt to that mindset that you constantly are worried about that tail end, then you will never do anything. So, uh, and I think like um, my response uh, whenever we are having like sort of talks with, uh, with co-founders or, or investors is that uh, actually the best thing that we can do is, uh, is act normal and uh, we invest back to make our societies better and, and by that we inc in basically increase the security. And I think, you know, from a sort of a startup point, uh, when we talk about global startups like Bolts or Wises or, or Pipe Drives or, or whatever, I mean, they, they are inherently, okay, people are, lots of people are working in the Baltics, but, uh, but inherently they are not really, I think, deemed as, uh, as uh, you know, Baltic uh, risk, right? So, so I think, you know, I think we should support Ukraine as much as we can. We, we should support uh, people who want to, uh, you know, if they, you know, need to relocate to the Baltics to, to, to give them all the means that they can develop their companies here. And ourselves, we should, uh, we should, uh, we should invest to make uh, our, our society so much better than that there is actually always, we will always have uh, allies who will help us. Any more reflections on this question? Yeah, so I would say that over the past month, we have seen some investors um, express some concerns. Um, not that many, um, and I think um, my guess is it will be more like the beginning of the pandemic, where the first two months everyone was deer in the headlights, oh my god, what's happening, let's just stop and not do anything and wait till we figure out what's going on. So, um, so I think there will be some slowdown, uh, and we do see that in some of the um, uh, conversations with investors that our companies are having. Um, in the medium to long term, I'm very bullish. I think we'll be even safer than we were before. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I think overall, uh, the, uh, the, ba the Baltic, ne uh, the Baltic uh, peoples have been uh, two times had, had to destroy the Russian Empire. If we're going to be involved in this, we're going to do the third time. So I think one of the big advantages we have is, is that we are small countries, right? So, you are, so if you have the ambition to build a big business, it's very hard or takes a very long time to build it just in these local markets. So if 
if you want to do that, you typically need to be, quote, born global and start um, in other markets. And, um, you know, like our Planet 42 guys did in South Africa, like, uh, uh, you know, many of the successful startups um, have been starting uh, outside uh, the local markets. And that gives you a fundamental advantage against competitors who may have started in a large market, been successful in that large market, have adapted all of their processes, products, you know, activities to, you know, being successful in that market, but suddenly then find that actually going to a different market is, is a really big challenge. And having a multilingual, multi-market, you know, you know, multi-customer base approach is a fundamentally different way of thinking about a business and it makes it much harder. So the great example I always give is, you know, all of the Polish VC funds are coming to the Baltic states to invest and they all complain to me that they don't have enough startups in Poland to invest and why? Because they say all the Polish guys, while well, they're, they're happy building a, you know, 20 to 40 million valuation business in Poland, because you can do that, you know, it's a big enough market, but then getting outside of Poland, whew, that's a whole different story, right? And so, I think that advantage is it's exactly the same one Israel has, right? So you cannot build a massive, massive business just with the Israeli market, and so you have to go outside. So you get pushed out of your comfort zone, you get comfortable with many different markets, many different customers, and that's a fundamental advantage that small countries all over the world have, right? And which I think we need to harness. Firstly, our advantage is that we are in the we belong to Western world. Uh, we are in the EU open market, uh, and and uh, also maybe third countries from the West uh, are uh, uh, understanding that we are belonging to their world. In the same time, uh, as a more or less young uh, market and young country, uh, we are more as a society, business society, we are more flexible, faster running, and we are more hungry to uh, to win the game. In the market, and that's that's I'm talking about my business. How we win the uh, uh, Western European markets uh, because uh, we came as a uh, young hungry uh, guys from from European Union, but no one knows us. Uh, but uh, we came to the market where the companies were sleepy, well, uh, quite rich companies, but very sleepy, very slowly moving and so on and in 10 years everything turned upside down and 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 the big aim for us also is not to become such sleepy and and, and uh, too uh, confident so s stay hung hungry stay foolish and turn the defect in, uh, into effect okay no next question Uh, so hello again, and I may have another question about more about the early stage about seed and pre-seed. So how do you actually, when you might not have any revenues, how do you do the valuation of the company? And do you say to, uh, say some approximations to the investors, or do you just say that mm, I don't know, let the market decide, or how does it happen? I guess this is for me. Um, so. Uh, so there is a market uh, for very early stage companies. In fact, if you look at our website, we publish a Baltic startup funding report twice a year where we actually, um, uh, we ask all of the founders who we know have closed rounds in this region and about 60% of them actually give us the data on the valuations and terms of their funding rounds um, in confidence and we publish the aggregate statistics. And so you can actually see roughly what the market is. And so there's ballpark, you know, metrics that you can see. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, there's, there's kind of rules of thumb, effectively, uh, you, you could say. And uh, so, you know, our typical pre-seed investments are something like, you know, three to four million pre-money valuation, right? Um, and, but those, those averages hide significant variations as well, right? So, you know, we backed one of the former, well, one of the founders of Lithuania's first unicorn, you know, on a PowerPoint, you know, a, you know, a valuation that was generous, right? 
because the guy's got tons of experience and you know there's a high likelihood of success. So there's obviously a bunch of different uh, ranges around there, but it's a it's a rule of thumb market, and ultimately the market is you know if the founder is happy with the terms offered and the investor is happy with the terms offered, you have a market price, right? But it's not a it's not a stock market, right? It's not a public price. It's a private market, uh, but it does function in some form as a as a market. Okay, any more questions? Hello, thank you for the great discussion again. So my question is, um, I heard somewhere between the lines that was said about that three Baltic states could do it together. So my question is, how exactly could that happen? So either through some government cooperation or through some education initiatives established in all three countries or through some pan-Baltic funds like change ventures or some some other way and um, a bit of a funny question will Estonia be willing to share the fame with um, Latvia and Lithuania in that case thank you I can say uh, just to kick off this uh, this discussion that is going to follow about this but uh, I just wanted to say that SSC Riga is the answer you know you look at uh, many of the uh, the uh, you know, uh, alumni who I have had the pleasure of studying together or, or known over the years, and many of them have teamed up and, and uh, are investors in each other's projects or so on and so forth. So actually, this has been the biggest contributor, I think, in terms of real kind of a business connections. Um, and, uh, and I hope that uh, will be for, for years and years. Well, I can say that from stock exchange perspective we, we have built we've been building Baltic market since 20 years ago and I'd say we, we have now succeeded because pretty much every single offering is, is happening on a Baltic level it's truly Baltic investor base the same example of Virshu Latvian company half of the investors came from Estonia and it, it works uh, on, on the on both ways so uh, example of, of good uh, cooperation between the Baltic countries putting you know aside any maybe national uh, agendas or, or things like that a short comment to the previous um, uh, question uh, why here I, I just I can only say from personal experience that more you travel around more you appreciate the privilege being born here and being uh, you know able to grow up your children here it's it's a fantastic place the, the combination that we've got in terms of economic opportunities development nature education you name it it's it's really quite unique it's it's a it's a great place to you know also live and, and develop businesses uh, out of the Baltics regarding uh, still in Latvia Lithuania as we, uh, Prudentia, we are uh, working in all three countries and when we are visiting our partners in, in Europe, we are, we are talking that we are the Baltic company, offices in Tallinn, Riga and Vilnius. So it's, the, there is a uh, lot, of, lot of other companies, VC funds, they are, they are, uh, they are working in all, all three countries, so it's, it's like more regional or not the state, but region uh, altogether. Yeah, I would like to tell, uh, say that uh, several hundred million in, in VC uh, and private equity funds already are looking at invest, uh, investments uh, at the same time in the Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. And uh, plenty of comp companies have add-ons and, and their relationships. And, and uh, for example, right now, uh, to a large extent, the, uh, the development, real estate development in Riga uh, uh, strangely enough, is, is, is done by Lithuanian and Estonian companies, which are the big developers at, at the moment for, for a number of reasons. And so I, I think uh, it has taken some time and, uh, uh, for us, uh, a generation, in, in the uh, getting back to the civilization, so to say, but uh, now uh, we understand. We are small players and we better play together. And, and uh, we have a uh, effect because we can we can see how the neighbors are doing that and, and each of the neighbors has di somewhat different focus 
but uh, then then we have different synergies and, and uh, some of the things each of us do some things better and uh, but, but, and I, I agree SSC has been very very uh, good and very high uh, high grade uh, uh, university in, 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 in the business and which has helped really I think to develop this interconnectivity in the, in the Baltics and I, I think um, because uh, um, uh, it, it doesn't hamper, it doesn't take, take away, I think, a lot, lot, as well as a lot, lot of Estonian investors in, in, in Latvia and, and, and Lithuanians and, and vice versa, so. Okay, um, we have at least Thank one you. more question, yeah. Oh, okay, three last questions, but very quickly. No, no, it's, it's a gentleman over there and the two people there. Ah, the oh. ladies first, okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, coming back to the question about the war in Ukraine and Russia, I just wanted to bring one topic. So, do you think, will it, will it affect the attractiveness of the region for international investors? Because we've seen Sequoia and Dreesen and everybody coming here and exploring the region and looking at the companies. So, do you think the threat that something can happen here, basic threat, um, will affect the amount of funding that we're getting here for the companies? And This uh, again, and I, I really want to underline how important actually local investment already is into the startup and, and uh, second round financing. I think sort of the the amount of capital that uh, that uh, has been the wealth has, that has been generated over the next uh, over the last ten years um, or, or more is significant. So we are actually self-sustained uh, and pretty much can be self-sustained. I mean, the the uh, the investors that come in they. Especially in the startup community, I think they bring in networks which are extremely extremely important to to drive up those uh, those companies' valuations and to to get more funding to to do even greater things. But uh, but as a base case, I think I don't know. Like and Andres can can say that uh, maybe I'm totally wrong here because he sees it from the venture capital point of view. But I really see that there is a lot of people who are born here, who kind of have made the money and who are happy to invest back. So, uh, and if the, the if the competition gets less, then maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, it'll make my life easier. Um, so, uh, so I I really don't. I actually think that for Sequoia's and Andreessen's and tech venture investors, I don't see an issue. As I said, maybe a short pause. Um, don't see an issue. I. I, it's not my segment, but I do wonder whether there will be an impact on in, uh, valuation um, and investment in uh, businesses that have significant physical operations here, in infrastructure projects and so forth. You know, those could well see, you know, with the others on this panel, would have a better idea of whether they s will see a political risk premium. You know, the thing about startups is, to a large extent, I mean, in the worst case, you can literally like fly the company out of the country and it still operates. All the data's in the cloud, the customers are largely elsewhere, the local market's not a sizable part of the business usually. So like for tech startups, um, even the worst case scenario is actually um, relatively benign, right? Yeah, they're missing something out. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, thank you for the discussion. Another practical one. So basically, we talked about uh, the, how to raise local unicorns, and as I understood from the discussion, Basically, one of the reasons is raising awareness for students, for young people, uh, towards entrepreneurship. Basically, um, my kind of question is, could we maybe outline the practical steps 
uh, for a SSC Riga student or any other Baltic States uh, university student to obtain the exposure to the local startup uh, ecosystem. For example, you mentioned the Tech Hub Riga meetings. I think several of you also talked about the uh, possibility that um, pupils and schools um, create their own uh, like small businesses, but maybe there are any, any other practical steps that I mean, anybody uh, here could do with the next day. So, every uh, uh, start in LV is the Startup Association. Um, you know, you can find the startups in Latvia pretty easily doing a little bit of Googling. Um, if you can't, then you're, you're less qualified to be hired by them, <laughs> right? So, it's not that hard to find them, and they're all looking for talented employees, right? So, we have a portfolio page on our website. All of those companies are looking for talented people. So, um, you know, uh, the community is pretty open, um, and you know it's it's pretty easy to find those links. And then you want to go to those meetups, you want to go uh, meet startups, uh, write them, you know, find those opportunities. Just sort of reading and, and following the what's happening in the world, right? I mentioned podcast acquired. I guess that's a very good one. Uh, obviously, it talks about large companies, successful companies, but takes through their stories, etc. Right? There's also how I built this, right? So I think there's quite a bit of content, right? And, and as we are in a sort of digital age, right, you you should have access to all of it, uh, and that will also uh, help you just maybe think bigger and see how how others did it. So maybe that inspires you as well. Because the startups are relatively small. You, you bring to the party, so to say. And uh, yeah, it, just be interested in, and, and then uh, jump in. And, and then, and, uh, then you, you'll learn to swim. You'll see what, what they're striving for and, and what, what, what are the skills which are valued and, and um, where you, where, where you can be in the, in the picture. That's just the same way. Okay. You still have a question? My question was kind of answered. Okay, so, okay, that is the last one. <laughs> Uh, hello, thanks for the panel for the interesting uh, discussion. Uh, one of the most important things was culture. Uh, I wanted to deal with uh, the legal structure. We, the panel mentioned it quite favorably, the stock options, and for me personally, EU residency in Estonia for firms, that's good, but what is the most pressing issue and what, what can uh, Baltics grow here? in legal means, what is missing? So, so um, I'm gonna be the eternal optimist and, and again, tell you some good stories. So, um, so we, we invest in companies that are tightly connected to the Baltics, but we don't care where the headquarters is you know, le legally. So we've invested in the US, in Germany, in Spanish headquarter companies and in Baltic headquarter companies. By a country mile, the Baltics are easier than anything else in Europe, certainly. So US and UK, pretty straightforward Anglo-Saxon legal systems, very well developed. Uh, Spain and Germany are an absolute um, expletive word disaster. Um, very, very difficult to do business there. Um, and so, you know, so relatively speaking again, we're in a very good position, you know, very digitally advanced, um, much more simple environments. Um, having said that, there are things we can improve. So one of the things I would like to do is see um, companies have the option to um, uh, not use the local notary service if they would like to and use DocuSign or whatever other you know, means they would like to use. Uh, it is permissible in Estonia now for companies with 10,000 euro share capital or more if they decide to do so. Um, I'd definitely like to see that in Latvia and Lithuania as well. I can just add that. Really, if you think about, like, sort of a, you know, as a founder, where should you start your company? I, don't worry about it. I mean, but but Baltics is a really good case. I can bring another example, like how we, in Indexo, we created a sec another class of shares which had never been done in Latvia before, uh, never been registered in a in a uh, in a uh, company register, and we managed to do it in like two months. So uh, actually talking sense to the regulators, to, to the 
business register and so on and so forth, and we managed to solve it. Okay. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you, and, uh, and let's hope that uh, we're going to be able to fund and invest in many uh, promising companies and grow them big and make lots of money, and uh, you will participate in this process. So, thank you, and uh, let's, let's look forward to it.